today on Be Something Wonderful, the first and only manifesting principle you'll ever need. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful. I have a big video for you today. The question came up, and it does from time to time. Tom, what do I do when I doubt it? When I start having fear of non-fulfillment? When I start doubting that my wish will manifest as a physical experience in 3D reality? Well, we're gonna talk about this today and more. When 3D circumstances appear contrary, when your thoughts and feelings are all over the place, right? When you feel overtaken by doubt and fear of non-fulfillment, invoke the first principle of reality creation. And what is that first principle of reality creation? The only principle you, you'll ever need. It is this, be still and know that I am God. The ancients told us the secret, the first principle. Neville Goddard refers to the first principle in his teachings. We're gonna show you this today. Cease striving, struggling, and resisting reality. Stop trying to do your way to wish fulfilled and be still and know that I am the way. Your I am awareness of being is the way, is the door, is the life, is the resurrection for everything you want. Your awareness of being is knowing I am God. I am is your savior, right? It, it is all you'll ever need. It's powerful. So let's hit this like we never have before. Neville Goddard said this, when in doubt, this first principle is, be still and know that I am God. No matter what happens, turn within and be still. Know that your awareness is God and that all things are possible to you. No matter what is happening on the outside, turn to the first principle. No matter what's going on in the people, events, and circumstances, no matter, no matter what's going on with those changing thoughts and feelings, if they're all over the place, as one of you described, right? I am. That's why in the scene, The Chosen, that Netflix show, the healing at the Pool of Bethesda, is so powerful when Jesus says, you only need me. You don't need anything else. You only need your awareness that you're already that which you desire to be. Your awareness and knowing that you are all possibilities and that they exist and live and move and have their being within you. I am is the absolute conviction and faith of fulfillment, no matter what. That's powerful. Remember, manifesting in reality creation is not something you do, it's something you are. I am. That's why also in the Netflix show, The Chosen, when Jesus is being questioned on him declaring himself the prophet, the Messiah, they say to him, well, we're going to have to invoke the law of Moses and punish you according to the law. We'll have to follow the law of Moses. And Jesus declares, your I am awareness of being you as that conscious center of the divine mind. I am the law. I am the law of Moses. Right? It feels like, a, this is the question that came up yesterday. It feels like I'm missing something. What's missing? Nothing but the persistent assumption and awareness that I am already that which I desire to be no matter what. Do you see it? That you are all that no matter what. That's the awesome power of the first principle of reality creation. Be still and know that I am source. Be still and know that I am the one and only creator of my reality. Be still and know that I am already that which I desire to be. Be still and know that fulfillment is mine always. This is powerful. The first principle of reality creation and the foundation really upon which the law of assumption is built. It's the foundation of the law of assumption, that first principle. Be still and know I am all that is. That all possibilities are already there within me that I, get, I need only choose, right? I have the free will to choose, to assume it, to declare it, to announce it right now, here and now. This is powerful. This is what Neville Goddard says, you, by your conscious assumptions, determine the nature of the world in which you live. Neville Goddard, not others, not your past, 
not those unconscious drives that Seth, the non-physical, that's that was channeled through Jane Roberts in the 70s, said, referred to it as unconscious drive, not those subjective tendencies, nothing but you, your conscious assumptions, your con you as that divine center decide it all right here and right now. You create that past and future that you, the, the past that you're, you believe is blocking you and the future that you believe is out of reach, you create it right now by your conscious assumptions. You create who you were, you create who you will be, and you create who you are right now, all in the here and now moment. The assumption of I am already that which I desire to be is a choice, right? This is what A Course in Miracles says about that. Remember, A Course in Miracles refers to heaven or ultimate reality as heaven, or really your ideal, you as the Son of God, you in that ideal identity that you are all possibilities, all realities, that you are fulfillment. Here's what A Course in Miracles says. In this world, heaven is a choice because here we believe there are, alter there are alternatives to choose between. Heaven is the decision I must make. We believe there's alternatives to our wish fulfilled. And so we'd start to have doubt and fear of non-fulfillment. We believe that non-fulfillment's a possibility. We believe that, that other possibilities other than what we desire and who we wish to be are possible. That there is a choice, but there are no choices. But but, you, but in this 3D world, in this 3D experience, in this physical experience, we are making a choice. But make it for fulfillment because it's already yours. Choose that. Be still and know. There's only fulfillment. Your wishes are fulfilled, but you can choose not to be fulfilled. You can choose the experience of I am not. Right? That's why A Course in Miracles says heaven is a choice because we believe there are alternatives to choose between. We create these other alternatives, these other possibilities that I am not, right? So heaven is the decision that I must make, right? That, that, that desired outcome, that ideal, choose that, right? That's powerful. God gave you everything, but you can choose not to accept it, you, not to see it, not to perceive it, not to assume it, like the older son in the prodigal, the story of the prodigal son, Right? The, the older son said, look, for so many years I've been serving you. He's talking to the father, right? Or you can think of the father as the law, right? I have never neglected a command of yours, yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. Luke 15, 29. He's referring to the party that the father threw for the younger son who went off and squandered his inheritance in a, inheritance in a far country and came back and was reborn, resurrected, imagined his desired end and rose to that end, occupied it and became it. Well, the, uh, the older son saying, well, you never, you know, I followed the law. In other words, I've imagined my desired end, I've affirmed it, I've assumed it and followed the law. But yet, but yet you, God, the Father, I am, your I am awareness, ultimate reality, you've never given me what I want. That's what you're saying, like the, the, the son. But what does the father say? It's already yours, right? You have forgotten the first principle. Be still and know. The older son had forgotten that it's already his, that he's always been with God, that he's never left God's side, that God never left him. This is powerful. Remember, manifesting in reality creation is not something you do or don't do. It's not something that works or doesn't work. I've heard a few of you mention this, right? It doesn't work. The law is not something you follow or don't follow. Rather, it's who you are. That's why Jesus declared, I am the law of Moses. I am reality. I am fulfillment. The father answers the son, right? The, the, the older son. Son, you've always been with me and all that, mine, all that is mine is yours. Luke 15, 31, you, you've never been apart from God in absolute fulfillment. You've never been apart from your wish fulfilled. If you desire it, it's fulfilled. It must be. It's law. Cause equals effect. There's only one reality, one God, one energy, one fulfillment, and you're it, right? The feeling of wish fulfilled is a choice, an acceptance of the truth of who you really are, I am. It's a choice and an acceptance. You could choose not to accept it but it's still yours anyway. You can choose to have that experience. It's not about do or don't do, work or doesn't work. 
the process or a lot, a process or a lot to follow or a technique to follow or not follow. It's none of that. It's who you are. The feeling of gratitude, of conviction and fulfillment is more than a temporary manifested elevated emotion. It is that. But it's more than that. Remember, it's a state of being. It's your essential beingness. It's your essential na nature or name, as scripture says, as I am awareness. And it's your choice to accept it as the gift and truth of who you are or not. It's yours anyway. It's, it's, that's who you are, whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not. But when you don't accept it, when you don't choose it, you create the experience of not being it. You create the experience of non-fulfillment. You create the experience of chasing reality when you are reality, right? When I, this is what Neville Goddard says. When I speak of feeling, in other words, the feeling of wish fulfilled, I don't mean emotion, but the acceptance of the fact that the desire is fulfilled. I do not mean emotion, but the acceptance of the fact of the truth of your true beingness that the desire is fulfilled. You can either complain and demand that the law the world, like the older son and the prodigal son, in reality convince you and prove to you that it works. So you can either complain and demand that the law, that the world, that reality convince you and prove to you that it works, or you can be the proof and conviction through which the father does the work. Wow. Remember that father is that higher power within you, your higher self. So you can either complain and demand hey, that the law, the world, reality convince you and prove to you that it works, or you can be the proof and conviction right here and right now through which the Father does the work, right? Woo, powerful. With God in my Father's house, right, God, all things are possible. All potential outcomes exist. All desires are fulfilled. All possible eternal and parallel realities exist. All potential outcomes exist. All desires are already fulfilled. All possible alternative parallel realities exist, live and move and have their being in my Father's house or in God or in ultimate reality. Either all things are possible and exist or nothing is possible and exists. And non-existence is impossible just by definition. So there's only existence, all potential, all realities. Either you know it or you don't, and not knowing is impossible because your awareness itself is knowing. Non-awareness is impossible. You are awareness of being. You are that self-aware intelligence. You are one with that. So non-awareness and non-existence is impossible. Non-knowing is impossible. So this is what it says in, in Scripture, where Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. This is beautiful. Jesus now making it clear that if it weren't possible, I would have told you. You couldn't, you, you, you couldn't even desire it or, or, or think of it if it were not possible, if it were not already fulfilled. That's what Jesus is saying there. If, if this weren't possible, you wouldn't even be able to desire any other infinite realities or any other outcomes or any other identities or experiences. So they must all exist. In my father's house are many mansions, infinite mansions, infinite possibilities, and they're all there for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, if, if, if it were not so, you would know it, <laughs> right? Because you can't desire. If you desire it, it's done. It's there. If you can think of it, it's fulfilled. That's what Jesus is saying. Your I am awareness. I, if it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, I wouldn't be aware of it. I wouldn't even desire it. I wouldn't even know of it unless, it unless it existed. That's powerful. If it weren't possible, you couldn't be aware of it or desire it. You couldn't even be aware of it or desire it. That's what Jesus was saying with that. If it were not so, I would have told you. Wow, that's clear there. And then... Jesus goes on to say, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, in other words, because it is so, right? I would have told you if it wasn't so, because it is so that, that all infinite potentials exist within you and they are all fulfilled within you and you get to choose. 
that there are infinite realities and wishes that already exist and are fulfilled, then I can be still and know that I am God. Because it is so, I can prepare my place. I can be still the first principle of reality creation in manifesting, be still and know. I can imagine, I can assume, I can affirm and accept that I am already that which I desire to be. I go and prepare a place for you, but if I go and prepare a place for you, in other words, because it is so, there are infinite realities, I can then prepare my place. I can be still and know that I am God. I can imagine, assume, and affirm and accept that I'm already that which I desire to be. And if I go and prepare a place for you, in other words, create and manifest it within, then I will come again and receive you to myself. That's the next part of that. I will come again and receive you to myself. So if I go, because it's so, and I prepare that place, I, I manifest it within. I assume, I affirm it, I create it within. Then I will come again and receive you to myself. In other words, I will have that physical manifested experience of that reality that I created within. That's powerful today. And, and Jesus goes on to say, he wraps it up here, that where I am, there you may be also. It's law. The 3D manifested world must reflect where I am within. Here I am, as Moses uh, answered God, when God was saying, Moses, Moses, here I am. What I imagine, what I assume, and what I accept as I am, right? And I like the wording here. I've pointed this out before in previous videos. If I go, I will come again. Go equals come. Do you see it? There's, there's no time here that you never left. If I go, I will come again, meaning I've never left. Not I will come, not I will come back, I, I, will, I will go, I will come again, meaning and receive and accept. I've already received it. I've already accepted it. It's already mine. I love that. I, if I go, I will come again, right? I will come back to where I already was, where I've always been in fulfillment. That's powerful. That's what we're talking about. That's why be still and know that I am God is that first principle that Neville got it and others have talked about, right? First and only manifesting principle you need, a must watch. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on our videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the ambassadors at Be Something Wonderful uh, at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful and for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, TikTok at Be Something Wonderful and our membership channel. We will have that live stream announced coming up for our next live stream to be broadcast exclusively on the membership channel. And a few days ago, I think maybe yesterday, the day before, we released another video, beautiful video, big one, on the membership channel. So if you're a member, check it out. If you're not a member, check out the link below. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.